Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And following on from my recent control panel tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can edit custom controls using a text editor. And I think you're going to find this extremely useful to know about. So let's take a look. So here we are in Fusion and I'm going to start by creating a node that we can use as the basis for our control panel. So I'm going to use Dent. It's not necessarily the most efficient one. Probably Alpha Divide is the best because it's got no default controls. But there is a reason I'm going to use Dent here. So I'm actually now going to split the screen and I'm going to come back when I've done so what I've got now is on the left, I've got BB Edit open, or you could use any text editor, the basic Apple text editor, or a, an advanced code editor of your choice. And I want to show you what happens if we copy this dent node, so Command C, come over to BB Edit and paste it in. So you can see what we've got. We've got the basic name of this node. And if, for example, we were to do F2 here and rename this as CTL, I'm using all caps for that. So OK, then copy it again and let's just paste it in again. And you can see that we've changed our name. So it's called CTL here and it's called CTL there. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using this text editor to refine this node that we've created. The first thing I want to do is I want to move the center control into the user panel. So we can do that using edit controls. And I'm just going to come down to the ID and I'm going to scroll down until I find center. So you can see it's a point control, offset control, crosshair control. And what we're going to do is put it into the user page. By default, the edit control sends everything to the user page, even the built-in controls. So let's do that. And you can see that the center is now in the user page. And if we now command C, paste it into our text editor, you can see that we've now got user controls and we've got this little block here, which is the center control. You can see link name center, it's point, it's an offset control, crosshair control, normal cross. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the size control and move it across as well. So edit controls. And what I can do here is in the ID field, I can type the word size and that brings up the size control. You can see again, it's putting it on the user page. So let's leave everything as it is apart from that. OK. And now you can see that the size is in our user page. So command C on that command V here. You can see that now we've got this block here, which is the size control. And you'll notice that it's got all its set up here. We've got the default input value, which is 0.5. We've got this, which says it's not an integer value, it's floating point. We've got the minimum and maximum scale for the slider and the min and max for the allowed values. And this is the spline type and so on. So the next thing I want to show you is how to hide these controls and settings page because we're done with that. We don't actually want to see those in our panel. So how are we going to do that? Well, after this first curly brace here, so user controls ordered, we've got a curly brace or curly bracket. I'm going to enter a few carriage returns there. And then I'm going to type the following and I'll put this on screen for you. So controls equals control page. That's, so that's all one word. And now we're going to open some curly braces because I'm in BB edit. You see it's opened and closed them, which is very handy. But you, if you're in text edit, you'll have to close the curly braces manually. So inside here, I'm going to type CT underscore visible and I'm going to do equal false because I want to hide the controls. So we need to add a comma at the end of that. And now we can copy this command C and come over back to fusion and paste it. Let's delete that original node and let's look what we've got. You can see that our controls page has disappeared. We can do the same thing with our settings page if we want to hide that. So let's come over here. Let's select this line that we've just input and carriage return paste Remember to keep that comma there, that's very important. And instead of controls, we're going to type the word 
common. And that is the reference for this settings page. So having done that, let's select all of that and paste it into Fusion, delete the previous version of this node. So now we're left with just the user page. So that's great. So now let's actually add a control of our own. So previously we've just grabbed this center and the size from the controls page. But if we wanted to set up our own controller, let's do that. So come to edit controls and let's give it a name. Let's call this one amp for amplitude. Now I'm just going to leave this exactly as is, apart from the fact that I'm going to make it a slider control. OK, so let's copy our revised node and paste it over here. You can see we've now got this block here which says amp and it is our slider control. If we wanted, we could change that slider control to a screw control just by retyping that. Retype that as screw control, copy it here, paste it here. Let's delete that other one. And you'll see that we've changed our amplitude to a screw control. But what we really want to be able to do is to set up some default values for this, just as we have with the size control. So how can we do that? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come back to the edit controls page. Let's in the ID field type amp, which will bring up that control that we've made. And we actually need to enter some different values for the default and the range. So I'm going to set a default value of one and I'm going to set the range maximum to 10. And the point of this is that changing these defaults to anything is going to force them to be visible in the settings page. And I'm actually going to switch it back to a slider control because that's actually what I want here. So OK. And you can see those changes reflected over here. So let's copy this. Command C and now paste it in. And you can see that now our amplitude controller has got these options here. So we can reset that default value to zero if we want a, a default for that or zero. And we can adjust that minimum and maximum scale. I'm just going to go with maybe five for that maximum scale. So then let's copy all of that and paste it back into Fusion uh, just to check. So there we go. We've reset the default to zero. That's all looking good. So I actually want another control and I'm going to do that not by coming to the edit controls page, but by duplicating this amplitude block. So I'm going to select the entire amplitude block, Command C. I'm going to enter a comma after that, and then I'm going to paste it. I'm just going to adjust that tabbing on that. So I want to get call this one frequency, frec for frequency, and I need to change the link name as well. So both of those here and here I've called frec for frequency. So the rest I'm just going to leave as is. And uh, since we're pretty much done with this, what I want to do is I want to just rename this. So I'm going to take out that one there and I'm going to take out the one down here at the bottom. Up here it's called CTL without any underscore one and down here it's called CTL. So let's copy the entire code block and let's paste it back in again and let's delete what was there. So now we've got this all really nicely set up. Although, actually, no, what I wanted to do was set up some defaults for both the amplitude and the frequency. So let's do that. So I'm going to have a default amplitude of 0.25 and a default frequency down here of 24. It'll become obvious later on why. So let's just finally copy that delete this one first so it doesn't rename it and then paste. So there you go. All nice and tidy. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up a new composition that I've made. I'm going to copy this control. Uh, so open up this project here and I'm going to paste the control in there. And I will give you a link to download this composition so you can follow along with me here. So we've got a circle and a square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just for fun, link them to this control. So the first thing I want to do is come to this merge, which has got my circle in it. And I'm going to right click on the center expression and I'm going to type CTL dot center. And now if I come back to my control node and select the gizmo, you can see I can move that around using this on screen control rather than the one on the merge itself. So let's come to the merge for the square. I'm going to add an expression to the size and link that to the control size. So in here I can type CTL dot size. And then if I come back over here, 
Let's set the size to two. Let's come back into the merge for the square and I want to add an expression to the center. So right click, add expression. And instead of that 0 0.5, I'm going to type one minus ctl dot center dot x. And I'm going to copy that and paste it instead of that second 0 0.5. And I'm going to change the x to a y. And I've accidentally removed that bracket, so make sure it's enclosed in brackets like that. So now, if we come back to our control and we move it up and down like that, you can see they're moving in opposite directions. So finally, let's have some fun with these two other controls that we added here. I'm just going to add an expression to this center on my control node here. So right click and add expression. So we're only interested in the Y and what we're going to do is we're going to do cos open brackets time divided by, and then I'm going to pick whip the frequency and then I'm going to do times and I'm going to pick the amplitude and then I'm going to type plus 0.5 and make sure to close the brackets like that. So now if we play it, we can change the amplitude to have it bigger like that. And we can change the frequency value to make it faster or slower. Have a slightly smaller amplitude. And let's have a faster frequency. So you can see we're controlling everything from this single panel, all very easy to set up. And if we wanted to make this available for future use, we could just come to settings and save as, and we could save that as a default setting. So save that as CTL, yes. And I'm just gonna show you where you can go to actually just bring that in directly. So this is now saved in the following place. So Macintosh HD, users, my username, library, application support, Blackmagic Design, Fusion, and it's in this settings folder. And if we drag that in and come over and have a look, you can see that that has got everything on it. It's, it's even got that animation that we did there, which you probably want to remove if you're saving this as a default setting. But anyway, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with that. That's where it's going to live. Oh, and I just want to show you one more thing before we go. So here's our control node. Actually, I'm going to delete that because I've got it stored in BB Edit here. I want to show you how to hide one of these controls. So I'm actually going to use the size control and I'm just going to add a carriage return there. And what I want to do is I want to type IC underscore visible equals false and comma. So now if I copy that, paste that back into my flow and we look at the control, you can see that we've hidden the size control. And that's because I've entered that IC visible in there. So let's try copying that and pasting it in at the end of that amplitude block. And then copy and paste. You can see we've hidden the amplitude as well. So with that simple line, we can hide any individual controls. And of course, if we want to make them visible again, all we need to do is change the false to true. So let's copy that, paste it back into Fusion, and then we come over and take a look at that. You can see that we've re-enabled the size control by making that expression true. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I've shown you all of this as it relates to creating a custom control panel, but all of these techniques are really going to be useful to you if, for example, you're creating macros and you want to tidy them up. It's much, much easier than trying to work through the edit controls page. Oh, and there is just one final tip I want to show you, and that's changing the order of the controls. And that's really tiresome to do with the edit controls option, but it's very, very easy to do if we directly edit the settings file. So I'm going to change the order of frequency and amplitude. So I'm going to grab that entire frequency block, cut it, so Command X, and I'm going to paste it in before the amplitude block. So paste it in there. It's very important I add a comma after it and that I remove the comma after the amplitude block. So you don't want a comma after the final block. And let's copy that and let's delete this one and then paste it. And you can see that now we've got those in a different order. Frequency as here is above 
amplitude. Very, very easy to order anything the way you want it just by editing the settings file directly. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.